Welcome everyone, my name is Nathaniel Merrill, and today I'm going to talk about our paper Code VIO, Visual Inertial Odometry with Learned Optimizable Dense Depth. This is an equal collaboration with Sing Sing Juo. In this work, we are tackling the problem of real-time dense mapping from a single camera and an inertial measurement unit, or IMU. More specifically, we want to jointly estimate the rigid body pose of the sensors as well as a dense reconstruction of the immediate surroundings, all in real time. This type of system can be used in a wide variety of applications, including MAV obstacle avoidance, path planning, and mobile AR or VR applications. The summary of our main contributions are as follows. We present for the first time a formulation for the estimation of compact optimizable dense depth, or codes, in an EKF-based VIO framework. We also provide many improvements to the code pipeline that enables accurate and real-time performance. Now you may be wondering what exactly code means. I will explain this on the next slide. CodeSlam introduced this idea as a solution to dense mapping. The idea is to represent the depth maps in Dense Monocular SLAM as a mapping from a compact optimizable code, which is learned by a Conditional Variational Autoencoder, or CVAE for short. This figure can give you an idea of what I'm talking about. The CVAE is a neural network with two input streams. On the top, images are fed into a UNET-style network, which provides learned multiscale features and predicts the depth uncertainty. On the bottom, a decoder network predicts dense depth from the optimizable code and is conditioned on the image features. Now the really interesting part is what you can do once you have an initial depth prediction. By treating the decoder network as a differentiable function of the code, we can actually use measurements from an external estimator system to refine the dense depth by only updating the code. In CodeSlam, the measurements come from the dense slant system and the Jacobian of the dense depth with respect to the code is needed to update uh, their state in the nonlinear optimization framework. While CodeSlam provided a novel and interesting formulation for dense mapping, there are still some potential drawbacks. First, their monocular SLAM system relies on the neural network's depth for scale, but as you may know, single view depth networks can be fairly unreliable on data that it has not seen in training. Second, they use completely dense measurements from photometric warping for the code update, which can be quite costly. Finally, although they only calculate it once per frame, the computation of the Jacobian with respect to the code is still a bottleneck in their system. In contrast, with code VIO, the IMU provides accurate scale to the system. We only use sparse measurements to update the dense depth, and I will show later on that the depth quality can still be greatly improved. Finally, we have found a new way to calculate the decoder network Jacobian, which is much more efficient than the method proposed by CodeSlam. So now let's talk about just how exactly we are doing these things. CodeVIO tightly couples a CVAE network and MSCKF based VIO estimator. To initialize a new depth map, we concatenate the current image with a sparse depth map created from past MSCKF features. Since the depth code is trained to be a zero mean Gaussian, we assume that zero is a good initial estimate for the code. The combination of features from the image and the properly scaled sparse depth from VIO and the zero code are used to predict the initial dense depth and depth uncertainty. Once we have the dense depth and uncertainty, we can use them in the MSCKF estimator to jointly update the depth code and VIO navigation states in a tightly coupled way. After propagating the VIO system forward to the current time using the IMU data, we use sparse feature tracks from the images to provide the only other necessary information to perform a state update. At this point, we can retrieve a new sparse depth map, updated code, and accurate IMU poses from the estimator. The updated code, which is the current best estimate, is then decoded in the CVAE network to obtain a more accurate dense depth map. We propose an efficient network to learn the mapping from the low dimensional code. 
On the top of this figure, you can see a similar looking UNET style network from before, which is responsible for predicting the depth uncertainty and multi-scale features. However, this time we are inserting images and the sparse depth from VIO. However, during training, we simply sample the sparse depths from the dense depth from the dataset. The variational autoencoder on the bottom of this figure learns to map a full resolution dense depth map to a small 32 dimensional code vector based on the conditional information from the UNET features. Our network is very fast due to the use of depthwise separable convolutions and additive skip connections. We train this network on the NYU dataset, which is popular, a popular depth dataset containing a large amount of RGBD images. For the ease of training, we simply sample the sparse depths from the ground truth depth maps. And we imitate the VIO sparse depths by sampling from fast corner locations, adding noise, and randomly varying the number of points that we sample. Our VIO estimator is based on the Multi-State Constraint Common Filter, or MSCKF for short. The state vector consists of the active IMU state, camera pose clones, and codes for certain keyframes. In the propagation stage, IMU gyroscope and accelerometer measurements drive the filter forward to the current time step t. In the update phase, we use the standard reprojection error to correct the state. That is, given a 2D feature track z, we project the triangulated point p into the current camera frame that z was measured in and compare the image coordinates. This is all reflected in the figure on the right, where you can see the sensor platform containing a single camera in IMU traversing the environment and observing the same landmark multiple times. The difference here between our system and the typical VIO is the depth code highlighted in red for a keyframe, which predicts a dense depth map in its field of view. In the next slide, I will talk about how to refine the depth map by only updating the code. As before, we have a 3D feature P being observed over multiple frames and a dense depth map, which we are calling D1 here. Remember now that the depth map is a function of this low dimensional code C1. The goal here is to update the code by relating the depth map D1 to the 3D feature P. To do this, we compare P geometrically to the depth at the corresponding image coordinate, which involves projecting P into the camera frame and comparing the depths. It is relatively inexpensive to track a large number of features that won't get triangulated and processed for reprojection error. To this end, we track a larger number of features than we will process for the previous updates. And we use these extra 2D correspondences to compare the consistency of the depth maps from multiple views by projecting the depths from one frame into the other. This constrains the depth maps to be stitched together well. Since both of these updates involve the decoded depth maps, we need the Jacobian of the depth with respect to the code in order to update the code states. Now the question arises, how to calculate the Jacobian of the depth with respect to the code? Deep learning libraries such as TensorFlow and PyTorch are optimized for computing gradients based on backpropagation. However, it is super slow to compute the network Jacobian matrix through backpropagation since it relies on computing the entire chain rule. Instead of backpropagation, we propose to compute the network Jacobians by the forward finite difference method. In the equation here, you can see that we take the derivative of the full depth map D by perturbing each axis of the code separately. Since calculating the derivative for each code element just takes a single forward pass of the decoder, we can apl actually implement this finite difference Jacobian with just a single mini batch forward pass, which in this case, we need to use the same size of the code, which is 32 for our system. Deep learning libraries are already highly tuned for mini batch inference. And due to the small code size, the finite difference Jacobian is pretty fast, only taking 10 milliseconds on a desktop GPU, while backpropagation takes 300 milliseconds or more. Also in the state estimator, due to our use of first estimate Jacobians, we can simply compute the Jacobian once per frame and store it for all future updates without any recalculation. 
We test the full system on the Yurok Mav dataset, which was unseen by the network during training. Here you can see a visual of the depth accuracy at each stage. To start, we only have sparse VIO depths, which along with the image and a zero code, are fed into the network to get an initial depth map. This along with the visualization of the depth error are shown in the center. On the right is the depth and error after the code is updated by the sparse measurements we previously discussed. As you can see, the error is greatly reduced after the updates. However, you may be wondering how this looks in the average case. In the table here on the right, we show some depth accuracy results averaged across all six Yurok Vicon room datasets. Green is bl best, and blue is second best per column. The SP in the ro rows denotes our network that is trained with images in sparse depth, while no SP is for the same network architecture trained with only image input. The accuracy of both networks is shown before and after the code is updated. Note that the direction of the arrows at the top of this table show you whether higher is better or lower is better for each metric. As you can see, our network with sparse depth is consistently and significantly improved after the code update, coming in second only to the sparse VIO depths in every metric. It is also interesting to see that the image-only network, while generally less accurate than ours, also does not improve so much after the code update. We believe that this may be due to the fact that the zero code depth from this network is too noisy for the VIO filter to handle, since it requires a good estimate, initial estimate for each state. We also notice that the pose accuracy is slightly improved with code VIO over the baseline open VINs, which we use to implement our system. Our system can also run in real time at 22 frames per second. Here's a demo of our system running. In the left subwindows, you can see from top to bottom the most recent zero code depth, updated depth, and current image with feature tracks. The point cloud of the local dense map is shown on the right. As you can see, our system provides reasonable dense reconstructions of the immediate surroundings in real time. In summary, we have presented a formulation for the tightly coupled estimation of compact dense depth codes and lightweight EKF-based VIO. While the IMU provides scale to our whole system, we leverage the VIO sparse depths to provide the metric scale to the CVAE depth network as opposed to the other way around in monocular systems. While previous works relied on dense residuals for code updates, we only use sparse measurements to update the dense depth maps, and have showed that the depth quality is still significantly improved with just these sparse measurements. We also provided an extremely efficient method to calculate the network Jacobian using a finite difference method. Our system is shown to have good generalization capability by testing on the Yurok dataset, which the network did not see during training. In the future, we would like to extend our system to a full SLAM system, including a loop closures, to create a, a globally consistent dense map. Thank you for your attention, and this concludes the presentation.